The theater behind me has been a historic fixture in downtown Bethesda for nearly 80 years. But today, thanks to the Montgomery County Native and Bethesda Blues and Jazz Supper Club owner, Rick Brown, it's a major venue for entertainment in our area. Hi, I'm Juan Quinette Crosby. I'll share more about the club in a moment and other interesting stories. That's all coming up next on Artico, art in your community. We opened on March 1st in 2013, so this March will be four years. We've had multiple types of music here. We've had jazz, blues, country, comedy, Latin. Uh, we've had Chick Corea, Branford Marsalis, some of the R&B stars, Layla Hathaway, some old school cameo, Latin, uh, Eddie Palmieri, Tito Puente Jr. I started going to jazz and blues shows when I was a little kid. My father took me to the Howard Theater when I was 13 years old, 1962, to see the Count Basie Orchestra. So I grew up watching good music and I uh, was really pleased to be able to bring this beautiful gem back to life to offer the community a great place to come see good music. I like that it's cozy, it's not overly sized. The music and the acoustics is pretty decent. Um, I like that we could grab a meal and just sit and chill for a little while before the show starts. It's not really any bad seat in the house. And, um, you know, the crowds are good and the music's good and they have a nice variety of artists here, so I really appreciate that. Easy to get to, parking in the building, great food, and uh, all the people who have come have said uh, what a great time they've had and to just keep it up. It's a beautiful venue, obviously, and uh, from the artist's point of view, they take great care of us, which we appreciate. When we come to a venue like this, we appreciate it when the backstage is clean, the food is wonderful, the, all the people that work here are friendly. The uh, sound crew for sound check today was spot on. So it starts with a very positive experience, which helps the show. Later this month, uh, the night before Thanksgiving, we have Rare Essence. Uh, that weekend, that Sunday, we have uh, the Gospel According to Jazz with Kirk Whalem and Keiko Matsui and Norman Brown. New Year's Eve, we have the fabulous Doc Scantlin and his Royal Palms Orchestra. Just check out our website, get on our email list. We do specials, we offer discount tickets and special advance notice for some shows. In fact, we have one show coming up in Christmas, it's going to go on sale next week, the Cassandra Wilson Show. Uh, Cassandra uh, does Christmas, so it's going to be a wonderful time.
which Donna Cock, Nikki Giovanni, names that can all be found here at the downtown Silver Spring Library, authors whose work have also been honored by the Hurston Wright Foundation. Named after famed authors Zora Neale Hurston and Richard Wright, the organization supports African American literature and the writers who do this important work. Over the years, the organization has honored the best in black literature, and this year was no exception. The other people need to see if it isn't correctly so that we're Back in 1990, we were at the sort of the dawn of a new renaissance in writing. Yes new voices, new stories being born. And as a member of the tribe of black writers who was creating those stories, I knew what we needed. And what we needed was an organization that would provide mentoring, training, recognition, and support. We offer an annual summer writers workshop, a multi-genre workshop for writers of poetry, fiction, and nonfiction. And the workshops are competitive, and what happens is that emerging writers get to work with some of the most talented black writers who are also master teachers. It's important because as someone who's writing myself, you need a, sta a safe place to go to, a place where you're among your peers, that you don't have to explain yourself. The Legacy Award was actually the idea of our former board member, um, Elin Harris, who died several years ago. And it, he really felt and he really pushed for a national award that would really give uh, black writers the recognition that too often they were not provided by the, the other awards. The importance of tonight is 26 years of the Hearst Wright Foundation, 15 years of celebrating excellence in literature by black writers. Writers come far and wide, many from the D.C. area, but also New York, Philadelphia, um, across country and the like. They all have a passion for writing, and what they share with black communities is they want to honor the voice, the agency, the history, the memory of black people. The judges who each year pick the winner and finalists of the Legacy Award are published black writers who have established themselves critically acclaimed writers in their own right. So we'll be honoring college writers in fiction and poetry. We'll also honor the winners and finalists in each category. And we will honor Ernest Gaines and Juno Diaz. Ernest Gaines, who has given us a generation of wonderful stories of the black experience. The autobiography of Miss Jane Pittman. A lesson before dying. It means it means a great uh, deal to me because it's given in the name of two very famous African American uh, writers, uh, Zora Neale Hurston and, and Richard Wright, and uh, who have had so much influence on uh, all of us, whether we are aware of it or not. We're also celebrating Juno Diaz, and he's receiving our Ella Baker Award. He's been telling stories where he's challenging, if you will, the power structure. Being honored in this way, especially uh, by one of the leading organizations in the African diaspora, uh, someone of the African diaspora, uh, is profoundly gratifying and humbling. It's a award that has become a very prestigious award, an award that is valued by the writers who receive it, as well as the publishing industry. Being nominated for this award makes me think of my mother a lot because I happen to know that she would be extraordinarily proud to know that my name was linked to writers like Zora Neale Hurston and Richard Wright. This is our Super Bowl, even more important because it is for us, by us. We want to um, expand our presence digitally, continue to respond to changes in the publishing industry, changes in the types of needs that the black writing community has. My hope is that in our next 15 years, in the next five years, I'd love to see when the submissions come in for the Legacy Awards, that we're not receiving hundreds of submissions, we're receiving thousands. These stories matter.
The creator chose the path for the night train. The revolutionary vehicle heaven sent to protect black bodies, bodies that hold treasure, treasures that go unnoticed, floating in the hope that is spoken into existence by the power of the Almighty. The golden gates of your soul hold the knowledge that every kingdom calls home on the road to glory. I've heard stories of lives lost in white supremacist fury, a flurry of black treasure all over the diaspora, left to live for corporate pleasure and hold tea. Ford modeled his treasure in the Congo with Belgian tires. Right around the same time, affluent Africans in America were struggling to survive race riots. In Atlanta, Oklahoma, Chicago, both evils perpetrated by perverted people who capture whole souls just to feed their pockets. We have got to put a stop to this, and it'll take generations. The ancestors transcended their suffering, so it is up to us to look to them so we can breathe free from dumbed-down education, grab the wheels of the night train, and teach our own history. For every ancestor, somebody say, Ashe. Delightful, energetic, explosive, words that easily describe the Konkuron West African Dance Company. Since 1983, the Konkuron West African Dance Company has been educating and entertaining audiences with authentic African dance and drumming performances throughout the D.C. area and the world. Konkuron was co-founded by its artistic director, Asan Kante, who brought the love of African dance with him from his native Senegal. I'm looking around in the United States and the many different states. They nev I never see it really traditional dance company representing Africa and African American. The vision was to have Africa here. We don't just do dance. We present like a musical theater with the history, the drama, the singing, the elder take my classes. Because when you talk about Africa, you talk about old, young, babies, everybody, because that's our power in Africa. The history we presented, you can just do it with professional dancers. You got to have the whole community. I've been dancing with Konkawan for so long. Um, Asan is a brilliant technician, he's a brilliant choreographer. He's very much connected to um, the culture. And so it's just it has been a wonderful place to stay rooted in the art form. You got the professional dance company, and then you got the second company, they end the study, and then you got the juniors and the babies dance company. And the babies, that's our grandkids. I sit down one day just thinking about it. I see so many people, so, so many of our people cannot travel to Africa. Why we don't have a conference where some of them can able to study here? They can learn and take that back home and also see the performance that way they can help themselves soon they have a company. That was the idea. I would say Kankura is the village, it's the country, it's the continent, it's the world. You know, because every year people looking forward, looking forward to come to DC to celebrate, you know, dance. We listen to the language of the drum. So we can communicate with them. The drum can tell us move to the right, give us to change. We don't count it like all the art form. We listen to that drum. So that's the reason why it's very important. I mean, I think it's like in anything in life, you know, you give some energy and you get some. It's the same thing in a dance class. You, you give some energy to dancers, and by dancing, they give you energy back. Same with other drummers. Yeah, so it's a way to connect to each other, to the music, the tradition, but also to, to other people. I call it the therapy and in the, in the, in the, in the dance company here. Because without it, I don't know what else to do because uh, it's part of who we are. And uh, it's a healing. Just to be in that dance floor with the drum, you don't think about nothing. What I'm proud of it, just to look in all these people been with me all these years, and how much accomplishment they did. I can sit back and say I did something right to them because they're all so successful. Everybody in this organization never left. They all grow up in this organization. Every time I look at them, I say, really, soon I leave this earth, I always 
remember I did something, I give something back to our people being taken away from Africa. Looking for something fun to do? Check out Artomatic, a five-week-long art festival. This year's event is in Potomac, Maryland, and features more than 350 artists of all variety from now until December 9, 2016. And to top it off, it's free. Or perhaps you'd enjoy the third annual Holiday Market Festival and Bonfire on December 10th and 11th at Gateway Park in Roslyn, Virginia, with everything from arts and crafts and live jazz to children's story time. The fun starts at 10 a.m. on both days. Or be wowed by some world-class photography during Photo Week DC, now through November 20th. Got a hankering to swing dance? Well, you can dance off that Thanksgiving meal at a swing dance party, presented by the Kennedy Center's Millennium Stage and Gotta Swing. That's Thanksgiving Day from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. And keep an eye out for the Theater Alliance's musical Black Nativity, entertaining audiences at the Anacostia Playhouse, now through December 31st. Smile. Now we've all heard the saying that a picture is worth a thousand words, and if you love photography like I do, then you're gonna love this next story. Photo Week DC is an annual week-long photography festival that features a photo contest and a variety of exhibitions. This year on display, pictures from Nat Geo, the world's most popular non-celebrity Instagram account, with 56 million followers and more than a billion likes. Whether fine art photography or photojournalism, Photo Week DC is an image lover's dream, a chance to see diverse, top-notch photography. Photo Week DC started nine years ago um, because DC is one of uh, the best cities in America to be a working photographer in. The amount of news agencies, fine art museums, institutions, places like National Geographic, um, the concentration of working photographers in DC is outstanding and there was a need. Right now it is bigger than ever. It's going to be over 150 events over the next nine days. What we try to do is make it what I like to call a photography playground for both photographers and for photography fans. And we try to provide a lot of workshops, portfolio reviews, a lot of resources for professional development. Um, but also, obviously, for people that love photography, which is one of the most accessible visual arts. We are about ready to do a photo walk and it's really exciting. People from the community can come 
and talk to both Robbie Schoen and myself who have worked with National Geographic previously and uh, we're just going to walk around DC and, and talk about colors and patterns and what we see around the city that might make a good photograph. So it's a really cool opportunity during photo week. So we've got roads and streets and pedestrians and traffic lights and cars all integrated with green vegetation and small parks. So it's going to be a great experience to get out there and, uh, and take a group of really keen amateur photographers through DC to Rock Creek Park and uh, help them, mentor them and sort of teach them a few things. A plethora of exciting exhibitions, um, a lot of talks, access to the photographers. We try to have everyone here. Essentially kind of allowing people like um, in on the story behind the photos. My name is Mustafa Abdulaziz. I'm a photographer from New York City. I live in Berlin, Germany, and I am here to open an exhibition on water in California. What this exhibition is, is uh, the 10th chapter of an ongoing project that looks at water and our interaction with the natural world through that prism. Now, the reason for this is rooted in the idea that we're moving towards a slight water crisis. I wanted to make something cohesive that looked through out the, the gamut of how we're interacting with water, but I also wanted to make something that was immersive, something that was atmospheric and beautiful so that a viewer that would look at an exhibition or look at the work or look at the different chapters, they would have the possibility to imagine their world and be in awe of it and not only think of it in crisis. PhotoDC.org is the one and be all, like uh, center of all information. It has sections separated into different types of events, to different locations. You can map out your day, your week. I think the, the sheer amount of things to do um, is what tends to surprise most people. Um, the fact that every day you get to pick between 40 plus exhibitions or you know 10 plus different events, you could go 24-7 <laughs> with, with Photo Week DC. I would say that a festival like this could only exist in DC. It is such like a global city. We have so many international partners and so many hyper-local partners as well. And this year's theme is uh, Global Lens Local Focus. And I feel like it's a great equalizer. I feel like a lot of other festivals celebrate like well-known photographers, whereas here we try to celebrate both the well-known and the emerging. We at National Geographic are really excited to be, uh, you know, uh, partnering and being the headquarters for uh, for Photo Week this year. Um, we've taken a part in Photo Week for several years now, but this is the first time that the headquarters are here, and that we'll be having, uh, you know, the majority of the events here on campus, uh, the talks, and all the uh, all the great stuff that we're offering over the next uh, 10 days or so. The exhibit that we're sitting in right now is uh, Instagram. So this is a, uh, a new show that we just opened uh, to coincide with the start of Photo Week. And uh, the show itself is about our Instagram account, at Nacio. We're really proud of the site, so its popularity uh, said what can we do with it? You know, we have all this, and how do we uh, how do we do interesting projects around this idea? And one of the things that we decided was a book. So this ex exhibition is based on a new book at Nacio. It has a wonderful amount of images that you see as we're walking around um, that are all over creation. They're they're pictures of animals and people and landscapes, and it's a great, vibrant, fun book. What do you do on Instagram? You like and you comment and you share and you send selfies. Um, everything in the show allows you to do those things in a physical or analog way. So you can click through in a physical way where you're touching a picture and it will physically turn and show you the caption. Um, there's ability to like images in here where you're basically uh, pulling a lever and dropping physical little uh, red hearts that drop down and we're going to keep track of that and, uh, and do something with the winning categories. Um, so all of this was an idea of what, what would it look like? And the overall structure, as you see when we're walking through, is a bit of a maze, right? So much like social media is a, is a place where you, um, you go in and you sort of get lost. So the architecture in the place kind of mirrors that, right? You see a picture, you follow it, and we expect people to wander through this and, and see a, um, a different experience every time they come through. There are over 200 images in the show. 
so there's a lot to see and they're all really, really great. Did you know that the Bethesda Blues and Jazz Supper Club used to be a movie theater? And now this building is on the National Register of Historic Places. Well, now you know. I'm on Quinette Crosby. Thank you so much for watching this show. And until next time, always remember to follow your art. This program was produced by WHUT, Howard University Television, and made possible by contributions from viewers like you. Thank you.